Okay, hi everyone. Today is a really easy lesson. I'll try to go a little bit faster today, so hopefully you'll keep the video a little bit smaller, not as long. So we're in chapter five, radicals. Remember what's inside is the index. Right, so you've got what's tucked in that little cubby hole is your index, and what is underneath the radical is called the radicand. And in this particular unit, we should start to know by heart without a calculator some of the basic foundations. So um, it's um, a good idea to make yourself a little table so that you have some facts. It makes it easier so that you can start to recognize different numbers um, and have kind of like a multiplication fact to some degree. So here we have, um, so this would be 2, for an example, to the first power, 2 to the second power, 2 to the third power. Likewise, um, uh, it would also be you know, uh, 3 to the third power, 3 to the second power, 3 to the third power, 3 to the fourth power, etc. So if we were to make this table, um, we would say 2 to the first power is 2, 2 squared is 4, 2 to the third power is 8, 2 to the fourth power. So basically, we're just multiplying by 2 each time. So 8 times 2 is 16. So that means 2 to the fourth power is 16. Multiply by 2, that gives you 32. So 2 to the fifth power is 32. Multiply by 2, you get 64, so that's 2 to the 6th power. Um, 2 times 64 is 128, and multiply that by 2, you get 256, and so on and so forth. So just kind of some of the basic numbers, right, so that you can recognize them. Um, so this would be 3 to the 1st power, 3 squared, 3 to the 3rd power, 3 to the 4th, 3 to the 5th, etc. So 3 to the 1st would be 3. 3 squared is 9, so basically you're just multiplying 3, so 9 times 3 is 27, 27 times 3 is 81, 81 times 3 is 243, um, 3 times 243 is 729, and after a while they start getting, you know, much bigger, so you don't have to keep going, but you should kind of recognize sometimes off to the side of my paper I have to do this because I'm not using a calculator to kind of make sure that, you know, um, to work it out. Um, then we got the fours. Four to the first power, four squared is 16. 16, four to the third power is 64. Four to the fourth power, so I'm just gonna multiply 64 times, 64 times another four, and 64 times another four is 256. And then I'm multiply 256 times another four, that's 1024, and as you can see, it's really starting to climb. So I'm not gonna go any further than that, because obviously the numbers are gonna get really large quickly so it kind of tears off because just two big of numbers and then we're going to do five to the first power five squared is 25 and then five to the third power so we're just multiplying five each time so if i multiply 125 times five right that's going to give me 625 and if i multiply 625 times five and actually work that out i'll get 3125 so you can see the numbers are really starting to get big fast 6 to the first power, 6 squared, and then 36 times 6 is 216, and then 216 times 6 is 856, etc. And I probably wouldn't go any further. Again, you should start to recognize some of these numbers. So when you see, you know, 729, you go, oh, wait a minute. I think that's, is that like 3 to the 6th power? Um, right? So you want to be able to do that. And then 7 to the first power, 7 squared and 343. Notice these get really large, so I just wanted to say that's a good idea to kind of have some of those facts handy, ready to go. Okay, so the other thing I want to mention is um, this isn't actually the lesson yet for today, but I wanted to emphasize, you know, evaluate this particular type of problem, 8 uh, raised to the 5 third power. Some of you have been doing it a different way, and it's not wrong, so I don't know if you're using Photomath, maybe you have an Avid friend who was an avid or out, had algebra 2 or pre-calculus and like, oh, you just do it this way. So keep in mind when we are teaching you a particular unit, there may be another way to teach you how to do that problem. And there is. So for an example, 8 raised to the 5 thirds power. Some of you have been saying, well, you're just replacing 8, right, as 2 to the third power because those are equivalent, right? Eight can be written as two to the third power. So there's nothing technically wrong with that. And then you're using uh, rules of exponents that says if you have a power to a power, you multiply. And when you end up multiplying those, you just get two to the fifth power, which is just 32. 
And that is not wrong, it is correct. However, this is for another unit. We haven't gotten to this unit yet, and so we don't want you to do that problem this way. Right, we don't want you to do that problem this way. We want you to, and you might say, well, what's the big deal? Uh, the idea is that in even though there may be multiple ways of learning how to do something in this particular unit, we are teaching you about radicals and we, you need to show us that you understand about radicals. So I noticed on a handful of people's homework, you uh, some people were doing it this way and I want you to stop doing that for this unit. We will get to that in the next unit or two. So while it's not wrong, we want to make sure that you are doing it with the information that we're giving you or the technique for this unit because this unit is about radicals. So you should have been able to understand that this can be rewritten as, right, because the denominator is three, so that could be rewritten as the cubic root of eight raised to the fifth power, right? That's what we wanted you to do. So this is what we were looking for when you were doing the problem because this is chapter five radicals. And this is actually chapter six, and we're not there yet. And we don't want you to do that yet. And then isn't the cubic root of eight asking what could you cube that would equal eight? And so obviously isn't the cubic root of eight two? Isn't it also here as well? So isn't the cubic root of eight two? Okay, and then, um, and then don't forget you have to fifth power, and then two to the fifth power is 32. So I just wanted to, before I started today's lesson, I just wanted to go over because I've had some students who have not been coming to Zoom and you're doing it this other way and I'm going, wait a minute, that's not what we've been showing you. We don't want you to do that yet. We want you to use your radical notation and understanding of radicals to do this problem. So um, I hope you understand that and we'll start doing it using radical notation. Okay, so here's actually the real lesson. Okay, today's real lesson is solving polynomial functions of various degrees only, um, and then only use your calculator when appropriate. So notice that we have an x to the fourth power, we have an x to the third power, we have an x squared, x minus two to the sixth power, we have an x to the eighth power. So those are polynomial functions of various degrees. We used a degree two. Now we're going to maybe degrees higher than two, three, four, five, six. So what do you think you should do? Yes, you want to use your algebra skills to isolate the polynomial uh, factor. You want to isolate the polynomial factor. So you want to use your algebra skills and undo everything that's on the outside of that. So therefore we want to subtract two to both sides. And then we're gonna multiply both sides by three. And that gives me the polynomial function isolated. So three times 730, 242 is 732. And then if I go to my paper after that, I wanna undo to the fourth power. So once I've isolated, then I'm gonna undo to the fourth power. So I'm gonna undo to the fourth power by taking the fourth root. So we want to take the fourth root, so you got to put a four in there. So we got to do an index. Our index needs to be four, right? Because that will undo that and just give us x equals. And then I have to do what is the fourth root of 732? So I'm thinking, what could you raise to the fourth power that's 732? So if I go back to that little paper or I say, well, what about three times three times three times three? Nope, that's nine times nine, 81. That's way too low. What about five times five times five times five? Well, that's 125 times 5 and 125 times 5 um, is going to be 3,125 and that's um, that's not 325. Um, 5 times 120 is 625. 625 so that's a little bit lower and then if I do 6 times 6 times 6 times 6 so 6 to the 4th power, that's 864. That's too high. So I know it's somewhere between 5 or 6. So this is where I'm going to use my calculator because it's not an exact perfect um, root. 
So I'm going to use my calculator. So I'm going to grab my calculator and do the fourth root. Remember, we um, have learned how to use our calculators. So I hit the index first. And then for my calculator, I have to hit the second key and the radical key. And then 732. And we're going to round to the hundredths place. So 5.20. And we're going to put the approximate symbol. Okay, I did notice that I made a mistake. You probably caught me that 246 subtract 2 is 244. I made a mistake and I fixed that. And then 244 times 3 is 732. Make sure you take the fourth root of both sides. So make sure you show undoing to both sides. And then let's use the approximate symbol. And that's approximately 5.20. But here's the problem. Remember, when you have a variable that is raised to an even power and you're undoing that. So when you're undoing a variable raised, a variable raised to fourth power and you're undoing it, you have to have plus and minus. So we have to say plus and minus 5.20. Right, only when it's an even index, when it's an even index or an even power, actually I should say when it's an even power, when you have an even power here and you're undoing it using an even index, you have to have that plus and minus. If I was just asking you what would be the fourth root of, say, 16, you would just say two. Now I know earlier on in the textbook it said plus and minus two, but technically, when they ask you what's the fourth root of 16, they're really just asking you what's the positive. They, if they wanted really wanted both, they would have put a plus and minus there. So if I was just asking you to evaluate the fourth root of 16, we would just say 2. If I have a variable that's equal to 16 and I'm undoing that, by taking the fourth root of both sides, that's when I would need the plus and minus, right? Because you're undoing a variable. So that's when you would actually need to have the plus and minus. And it's only when this is an even power. Okay? Okay, number two. Remember, we want to isolate and use our algebra skills and isolate and get the polynomial function to be isolated. So anything that's outside that polynomial function, we want to undo. So we're going to divide both sides by 6. And that gives us x cubed equals, let's see, 6 goes into that um, twice. And then, so I believe that's negative 216. Now we can undo by taking a cubic root. So take the cubic root. We want you to show both sides, taking the cubic root of both sides. And that will give you just x by itself. And then what could you possibly cube that would equal negative 216? Is it 2 times 2 times 2 negative? Is it negative 3 times negative 3 times negative 3? Is it negative 4 times negative 4 times negative 4? Or negative 5 times negative 5 times negative 5? Right? And that's 216. You know why my pen is not erasing? So it's negative 216. So 3 times 3 times 3 is 27. 4 times 4 times 4 is 64. 5 times 5 times 5 is 125. That's too low. 6 times 6 times 6, right? And these would all end up being negative. That's 36 and 36 times 6. 6 times 6 is 36. There you go. So this is going to come out to be negative 6. And notice that there is one answer. It's not plus and minus because what could you plug in for x that would make it make that true? There's only one answer that would make that true. Right, so it's not plus and minus, it's just negative 6. There's only one answer that would make that a true statement. So you could say if you have if you have an ah, an even, and you're trying to undo it, there's there should be two, there should be plus and minus roots. And if you have to an odd power and you're trying to solve, there would just be one real root, right? Okay, so this one, um, we need to undo to the sixth power. So we're gonna take the sixth root of both sides. Make sure that you actually write your index in there. It, it's important that you write the index in there. And that gives me x minus two, right? Cause that's gonna undo to the sixth power. 
the six root and the six power inverse operations, they undo each other. And because we are undoing a variable to an even power, right? So since we have a variable and we're undoing it to an even power, we have to plus and minus. And then what is the six root of 128? So six root of 128, is it two to the six power? Is it three to the six power? Is it four to the six power? Um, let's look at our thing. So we've got four to the, so 128, We've got um, 3 to the 6 power, sorry, to the 6 power. 3 to the 6 power is 729. That's too much. We've got um, 2 to the 6 power is 64. Right, so that's too little. And then 3 is too much. So we know it's between 2 and 6. So we're going to have to use it. Um, let's see. Oh, it's to the 3rd power. Whoops, I recopied that problem down wrong. Let's see. So we're going to use a calculator for that. So we're going to use a calculator for that. So that gives me this 6 root and x minus 2 equals plus, and, equals plus and minus. So I'm going to approximate that. So I'm going to grab a calculator and do the 6 root of... Two, 128 is about 2.24 ish. I'm going to round to the hundreds place and then we're going to add 2 to both sides. So it's x equals 2 plus or minus 2.24. So when you add 2.24, that gives you 4, 4.24. And another answer is when you subtract 2 minus 2.24 is. Um, negative 0 0.24 when you do the subtraction, right? Negative 2.24 um, plus a positive 2 is going to make that 0 0.24, and those are negatives. Okay, let's do the next one. Okay, so number 4, um, again, we're isolating the polynomial function. So anything that's outside the x to the eighth power, we want to undo that. So we're going to subtract 64 from both sides. Divide both sides by 2. Undo x to the eighth power by taking the eighth root. And that gives you x equals, and normally it would be plus and minus, right? Because we have an even power and we're undoing a variable by taking the eighth root. Therefore, it would be plus and minus. But did you remember that um, there is no real answer? So remember, there's a fact that you should know that if you have an even index, no matter, and you have a negative radicand, this is always no real answer because we're not going to use any um, imaginary answers in this unit. We're only looking for real answers. So we're going to say no real solution. Okay, so let's look at um, the next set of problems that you're going to be on your homework. Rewrite in standard form. Right now, these are somewhat scientific notation form to some degree. So rewrite them in standard form just means what would it actually equal? And we don't want you to use a calculator. So before we do this, let's just review about um, 10 to the first power is obviously 10. 10 to the second power would be 10 times 10, which would be 100. 10 to the third power would be 10 times 10 times 10, which would be 1,000. 10 to the fourth power would be 10 times 10 times 10 times 10, would be 10,000. 10 to the fifth power is going to be 100,000, and so on and so forth. So note 10, notice 10 squared has two zeros. 1, 0, 10 to the 3rd is 3, 10 to the 4th is 4, 10 to the 5th is 5, etc. And then 10 to the negative 1 means 1 tenth. 10 to the negative 2 means 1 hundredths. 10 to the negative 3 means 1 thousandths. And 10 to the negative 4 means 1 ten thousandths, and so on and so forth. So if you were to go and grab a calculator, so if you want, you can go grab a calculator, come back. 
if you were to take a dec any number, whether it's a decimal or not, like 4.8, and you were to multiply it by 1,000, all you have to do is move the decimal three times to the right. And that would give you 4800. Zero, zero. So the decimal was here, and we moved it 1, 2, 3, and then we put it in the back. So that would be 4,800. And you can try it and see if you actually multiply 4.8 times 1,000, that's what you would get. If you had 0 0.0018 times 100, it's just going to move the decimal twice, two digits to the right. So that would give you a 0 0.18 because it was here. And then we moved it one, two places. So now it's in between the 0 and the 1, 8. If you divide, if you have 4.8 and you divide by 100, you're going to move the decimal twice, but you're going to move the decimal back two times. So that would, you have to put a placeholder right there because you moved it back. So that would be 0 0.048. If you had 30, 23, 22.81 and you divided by a thousand, you would move the decimal three times to the left, one, two, and then you have to put a placeholder. So that would be 0 0.02281. So when you multiply it by 100, you move it, the number of decimals to the right. And if you divide by 100 or 1,000, the number of zeros, that's how many decimal places you're going to move it back. So 10 squared is really 6 times 100. So we obviously we know that 600, but just so you can see, wasn't the decimal really right there? And then if we move 6, move the decimal back 1, 2 to the right, Put two placeholders, see, you get 600, but you already knew 6 times 100 was 600. Problem number 6, remember 10 to the negative 2 10 to the negative 2 is 1 over 100. If you put a 1 underneath that and multiply straight across, that's negative 8.23 times 100, so you're really dividing by 100. So multiplying by 10 to the negative 2 is really the same as negative 8.23 divided by 100. Negative 8.23 times 10 to the negative third power is the same as negative 8.23 divided by 1,000. So 10 to the negative second power is really 1 hundredths, 1 over 100, when you multiply that, you're really dividing by 100. So that's another way of writing dividing by 100. And when you divide by 100, you can move the decimal two places to the back, to the left. So that's going to be negative 0 0.0823. So remember, the decimal was here in between the 8 and the 2. And we moved it one, two places. So now it's going to be right there. So that's going to be your answer. Let's look at another one. So this is 9.1 times 1 over 1,000, right? Because it's 3, so it should be have 1,000. And when you multiply by 1 over 1,000, that's the same as 9.1 divided by 1,000. Therefore, if we're dividing, then we're going to move the decimal 3 times to the left. So 1, 2, 3. So we have to put 3 placeholders. So 0 0.0091, and this is called standard form. So this is what your homework is going to look like tonight. So sometimes you're going to have to use a calculator. Sometimes you didn't know needed to you didn't need to use a calculator. Sometimes there's no real answer. Um, remember the plus and minus when you are undoing a variable with an even index. When you're undoing that, you got to remember to have that plus and minus. Okay, so pretty easy homework tonight. Have a good day. Bye-bye.